Hey guys, I just did a little commercial on Patreon with hot sauce and we were eating chicken, Purdue chicken, and it brought me to this story. And I wanted to talk about it on this video. So here I go. Years ago, some guy was going out with Paul Castellano's daughter. And uh, one day he got a little uppity and with Paul Castellano in the house in front of his daughter and whatever. And uh, he said to Paul that uh, you look like Purdue. You look like a chicken. Purdue actually did look like a chicken. It wasn't a joke to Paul. He was very, very insulted that he was insulted in front of his daughter and his family. And uh, he ordered a hit on the boyfriend. They got him in Manhattan. There was a hell of a lot of guys there. Uh, Joe Messina, John Gotti, Frankie DeChico, a whole bunch of guys. Sonny Black, I think. So they got together and they got this guy. Somebody made an appointment with him. He came down and he got hit. One, two, three. It was in some sort of a warehouse, but it was in Manhattan. Streets were packed. After they killed him, they couldn't really get rid of the body that easy. They got in touch with Roy DeMeo. Roy DeMeo came down with his crew. They came down, knives, little buzz saws. They sawed the guy up into little packages like this and got rid of the, the body. Joe, Joe Messina's brother-in-law, Sal Vitale, became the underboss, became an informant, and he talked about this story and cooperated against Joe Messina and a whole bunch of guys. But I heard this story direct from Frankie DeChico. When it was done, he told me the whole story. I knew a little bit about that this kid was in trouble. And uh, he told me, Sammy, it was unfucking believable They came in, one, two, three, they opened up a few little attache cases and took out little saws, portable saws, knives. They cut this guy up in a split second. It was unbelievable. Put him in little boxes and walked out with him, one after the other, till he was gone. It wasn't the only boyfriend that Paul killed. There was another guy who was going out with a, I don't know, he was making accusations about us, something, you know, sexually. I don't even remember what it was. But Paul didn't like that either. He got killed too. Now, one day I was in his house and she came out. She was a very pretty girl. And she asked me if I date if I go out, boy, oh boy, I thought she might have been flirting. I don't know what she was doing, but I said, no, 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 I'm married. I don't go out. I don't do anything. The last fucking person I would ever date is her. I'm not going to be number three. Crazy story. So when you get back to Purdue, Paul didn't like him because Paul wanted to do something with him, with their chickens. Um, Paul had uh, a company, the name of it was Dial Poultry and Purdue's company, but Purdue didn't want to do anything with him. Years later, Paul is going to go to a meeting, Purdue's in some sort of trouble with the unions and stuff, and he's going to ask, Paul for help. I had visited Paul that day. He was with Tommy Bellotti. He told me a little bit about it, not much. And he says, come with me with this meeting. Okay. And I went down. Me and Tommy were sitting on the side, like Paul's muscle. And Paul was sitting at the table with Purdue. Paul was abusing the shit out of him. I, I just couldn't even believe it. The guy asked him for help with the union, was willing to give him some money or whatever. Paul just looked him dead in the eye. Are you calling me a fucking gangster? Purdue was 
he was laying eggs. He turned around, bro. It's just, buck, 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 uh, but please, Paul, please. Well, I, I didn't say that. I didn't call you a gangster. But why the fuck you think I could straighten out your problems? When I wanted to deal with you years before, you didn't want to deal with me. Now you're in trouble with the unions and you come to me. Well, straighten out your own fucking problems. I mean, this guy was fucking white. He was terrified. Especially when Paul raised his voice a little bit. He wasn't, he never did that even when he was mad, but a little bit, he raised it. Me and Tommy stood up right away. <laughs> I think that was the icing on the cake. He did lay an egg, I think, got up and walked out of the joint. Years later, when I cooperated, the government came to me and said, Paul was sitting in a meeting. You were there. I said, yeah, I was. He was threatening him. He was trying to shake him down. No. No, I said, you got it wrong. That's not what was happening. Well, what was happening, Sammy? Actually, Purdue wanted him to do some illegal shit, shake down the fucking union. He was willing to pay Paul. And Paul got, was mad at him and had an attitude. I only heard half the conversation. I didn't want to repeat what I'm repeating now to them. And I said, that was it, bro. It was the other way around. So they let it go. That's about it. So uh, I got a couple of other videos coming up. I've been real busy. I thank you so much for being patient. We're working on the podcast. It's a lot harder to put together, especially with this Corona thing. One day they want to travel, one day they can't, one day they want to wear a mask. So I want to apologize, but I thank you so much for being patient. I love you guys. I really, really do. Adios.